Hello, my name is Niall Dehan. I'm a developer advocate with Kalunda, and today I'm going to talk about how to build transparent agentic orchestration solutions. The idea here is that we're going to be able to give an agent power to control a whole bunch of different things, but also keep and maintain auditability, transparency, and maintainability, which is kind of key and a little bit different. So I'm going to do that using a cool combination of exactly three slides um, in the beginning and uh, a live demo most of the time. And then if I get through the live demo fast enough, I will then uh, show uh, two more slides. So you've got that look to look forward to, I guess. So let's kick things off. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the concepts here, uh, specifically when it comes to um, something like uh, deterministic orchestration, um, because that's what orchestration is right now, generally speaking. And in that, you have something like in the beginning here, this is a BPMN model, which is great for the predictable, repeatable processes. You build it and it's executable. In this case, we have a start event here, and this shows that an email comes in with some sort of a request. And now we have a little agent in here. This is a little task. And this particular task can be used to add an LM to determinate to a deterministic process so that it can help do things that a human does. This is perfectly lovely. You can see here that we get our um, email, it then gets classified here by this task, and then we subsequently decide what to do next. Interestingly, this is not what I want to talk about today. This is adding some AI task agent to an existing deterministic process what I'm talking about is turning a process like this, which is very predictable, which is by design predictable, um, into something far more dynamic, something that the agent has a lot more power over. And for that, we're going to talk about something like this. So at a very high level, what you're looking at is a combination in BPMN of being able to build deterministic steps that basically can't be fudged um, and adding a non-deterministic element to it where things can get a little bit hairy. So for instance, we start off our process, we run a task, we have a gateway here, and then we move into this space here. This is a sub-process, it's an ad hoc sub-process in BPMN. And everything in here, all the tasks you see, they can be executed as many times as you like, um, in whatever order you like, um, for whatever reason you like. And the idea is that an agent controls everything in here, it gets to decide what to do. So the agent has a specific goal and you can think of this as its toolbox to achieve that. So things that happen in here happen for whatever reason the agent decides. Once they're finished, we then move back into our predictable flow. Now there's a bunch of reasons why that's important. Um, for now, the one to keep in mind is that this maintains consistency and context while you execute a long running process because a lot of processes are mostly deterministic. And the dynamic aspect, while important, is not always the, 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 the biggest focal point. It's often an edge case, or it happens at the very beginning or the very end of a process, depending. So what I'm gonna show you now is um, the ability to build something like this within the deterministic framework of BPMN very, very easily. And in the end, what you get is a nice break between uh, deterministic, dynamic, kind of gets melded into one continuous flow that sort of doesn't need to break away from context in order to um, uh, uh, satisfy an end-to-end -end process. So with that said, uh, let's go and show you how a model works. Welcome to the Comoda Modeler where you can build um, uh, beacon models and execute them and then deploy them to um, uh, our engine. In this case, we are using it to build this um, agent pattern. And I'm gonna start off with a very basic model here, and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna show you what a real complicated one looks like. This always has two main components. The first component is the LLM itself, which is a task, right? That is connected to some large language model, uh, along with a context and a system prompt. This one, for instance, is in charge of trying to deliver a message. Now, in order to achieve delivery a message, it needs to have a set of tools that are available, <clears throat> and this set of tools are in this subprocess as I showed earlier. And it's able to send in a Slack message, send an email, or ask for more information from a user. And in order to explain how the tools work, I'm going to talk through a little bit about uh, that by adding one. So we have three tools here. I'm going to add a fourth. I'm going to make this a little bigger, and I'm going to drag a, a little task in here. And this is a user task. So this is going to go and be a front end for some user to see. And this is going to be uh, ask HR 
for uh, clarification. Okay, this is a task now I'm letting uh, this message, this agent be able to trigger this. So when we have this task, what do we need? Well, first of all, we need to tell the agent what this is for. And each um, element has a natural language description of what that um, task does. In this case, use this tool to send a question to HR. Great, so now it knows why it might use it. The next important bit is it needs to know what's required in order to use it. So where we can add some inputs. So here I can say, okay, I can use this function to say from AI, and this is tool call and it says message text. This is describing to the agent where it needs to keep the variable that we're gonna be using it. So it'll either create or find this variable. And this says, this is a question for HR that you're going to send. So this describes in natural language to the agent what it's for. And then uh, of course, finally, we need some kind of output and um, that is going to be tool result because we want to be able to tell the agent um, what uh, the HR thinks about this. And we can see here that we have a variable called HR validation and it'll have some message from HR about what they think of the question. And then finally, I'm just going to add um, a front end so we can then have the agent actually take a look at stuff. There we go. And that is how the, the basic concept works. You can add more tools as long as you describe those three things. You basically have an element description. You then have a description of how the input looks and the agent then will find that information about what tool set it has and try to use that in order to solve the goal it has. Now let's do this with a much bigger and more complicated example. We're moving now from this model to this very much more complicated model. Let me, before I expand it to show you the whole thing, let me explain what this does. This is a model, an agent that works for a financial institution, and they're gonna take in a request, a very generic request that could be about anything about that this financial institution can deal with. It could be about um, requesting opening an account, it could be requesting whatever um, about the bank balance, it doesn't really matter. The key thing is that this agent here takes either an email or a web form and then tries to solve that problem while also looking for potentially my, my fraud that might happen. The tools it has at its disposal are quite a few. So it's got like a section here for follow-up communication. It's got a section here for involving internal staff. Here you can see that it's got a section for checking um, data sources and knowledge bases. Then it has some rules engines down here and then finally some actions it can take. So some actual actions. All of this is in order to uh, solve the problem that comes in from the email. And we'll talk through how all of this works as we go along. So because this starts with either a web form or an email, I'm gonna start with a web form. And I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna click on this, and here is the web form I created. My name is Niall, and my email address is this. And I'm going to say account status. Hello, I have an account, and I would like to know the status of that account. Easy enough. So I'm gonna click um, start process. Okay, so from that point, you can see the process has moved quite swiftly on to uh, check long-term memory. This means it's checking, have we had conversations like this before? Have we had conversations with this user before? And we can see it's found that information and then it enriches the request so the agent knows more context and how to solve it. The next thing is the agent is working out what to do next. And the very first thing it is doing is it's calling this subprocess, which is validating the customer's identity, right? So if I take a look in here, um, this is a subprocess in which it's already sent me an email requesting something. Luckily, I have my email right here. So you see that it sent me an email, and this thing is saying, uh, Dear Value Customer, that's my name, um, blah, 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 for security reasons, they don't want to give me any information without actually clarifying stuff, and they want me to give them um, a driving license or something. So um, I can do that. I'm the kind of person who has uh, quite a few IDs hanging around. So I'm going to click reply. I'm going to pick one of them, drop it in there, and send the email. There we go. So what should happen then is that this is waiting for a response. Now, this is a completely deterministic process, but the agent is able to trigger that as a high level. So for instance, it could be a while before we wait for this email to come in, but at the time, the agent doesn't really mind too much. Um, it's executed this and it's able to um, sort of deal with the responses of this subprocess. Now we see here that's already found the response that I sent. It's actually got that document from my um, email and now it's running um, an, an IDP, intelligent 
document processing in order to validate that it actually um, get the information out of the ID so that we can check who it is. It's then going to go here to this user task. And this user task is going to display to the user uh, both the image that was sent and the date of the IDP um, a, um, uh, instance generated to make sure it's accurate. Now that it's moved on, I can go back to task list and I can take a look. Here is what I uploaded. Uh, there's the ID I uploaded and here's what the, um, ID, uh, the, the IDP pulled out of it. I'm going to just change this because otherwise it would detect some fraud and I'm going to say that's my name and I'm going to say this data is correct and then complete. And now we're going to go back here and then go back to our main process because this is going to move on in a second. There we go. And now it's gone back to the main process. So now the agent has even more um, details than before, right? It has uh, a lot more information. And right now you can see it is triggering some knowledge base here. And you can see that it's basically checked for customer knowledge base. It's got an account data. It's basically trying to work out what to do next. And it's also published an update to Slack because I told it to. And it's gone back around now. It's actually verified it's got my, probably my account date at this point, and now it sent me a follow-up email. So let's take a look what that looks like. So it's got a new e email here, and thank you for your patience, I've gathered your information. And so here it is. So it basically has my account data. Um, it's telling me I've got a savings account, which is active. My customer profile is pretty decent, and that's basically it. So this deals really well with the request. Um, I'm gonna ignore that for now. One of the nice things is that when this finishes, it'll set that long-term memory. But then I also have a second LM that judges the effectiveness because everything that you just saw is um, maintained in this, um, this object, including all the agent's um, choices and its reasoning. So for instance, here is my request. Hello, I have an account and I would like the status. And you can see right here that and um, this is what the agent thinks about that. The customer is requesting this based on the connections information. This is Niall who previously requested this information. However, I need to verify the identity first. So it's got a bunch of guardrails to make sure that it knows how to do that. And you can see that each tool that it has, it's explained why it might want to do this. So it says check account data. I can query the account information. So it's looking through all the tools it has access to to see what's relevant. Now this information, all of this, data is then given to this um, uh, agent and it validates whether the agent is actually performed well or not. And then we can go and basically trigger a user to take a look at what, how the agent's performance went. And this can then summarize and this can really help the agent improve going forward. So the first bit of transparency that we talk about is the ability to be able to see exactly how execution works, right? And also be able to hold state really well. We also have the ability to transparently um, uh, a judge an agent, but it gets more interesting than that because, because of the way that we maintain this and the way we run this, we can then go and check out something like this. So this is a, a report on, I think this is how long each step takes to execute. So I can just click into that and take a look. So I can zoom in a little bit and I can say that this takes a couple of milliseconds. This doesn't take very long at all. Uh, this takes about a minute. You can see that this is a real bottleneck. It takes about a day to get the um, financial expert involved. So that's quite interesting because this is important because what can end up happening is you can end up adding these AI agents to your, um, uh, to your processes but have no real good KPIs or ways of measuring success. This can be a way of saying, well, now we actually know how long things now take. So this slide basically explains some of the things that hopefully I've demonstrated work quite well. The first is transparent execution. So as well as knowing exactly what the agent is doing, we can also check out what happens after the fact and be able to judge the agent on how it actually executes things in a really transparent and very, very visual way. The next thing, of course, is asynchronous tooling. This means that you can grow your agent much bigger because unlike MCP or agent agent protocol, they tend to rely on direct connections or um, the length of a request um, and potential timeouts might exist. Here we can wait for as long as possible. You can have an agent that's doing a task that takes like a week, it doesn't really matter. And finally we have an independent, independent audit trail. Everything you saw then, everything the agent executes is added to an append only log, which means that um, everything that it gets executed through the whole life cycle of the process is maintainable as an independent artifact from the agent itself, which gives you far more transparency. Hope that was useful. 
and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.